right. It's been a hot minute. Um, I don't know what else. There's got to be more in the basement to show us who Clive is targeting. And if that's the case, we can get ahead of him. Stop the killings before they can happen. Forrest, we need to go back down. By we, you mean me, right? Yep. Like I said, I need to handle all these calls. Maybe start with that creepy mannequin room you mentioned before. I still have a lot of questions about those, by the way. Me too. Hang on. I'm just going to clean up the area. Um, just so I get the controls on a right again. Um, I just got to familiarize myself with the controls. The controls. Um, yeah, that, that about does it. So you want me to go back down to the Basiamonte? Of course. How does one get back down? I get back down. Oh, every goddamn time, I tell you what. No. Is it through here? I mean, it's a basement. Spooky door, closed on its own. Okay, ghost. Creepy! It's literally doors close on their own all the time. Any who's right, how does one. Wait, what's with the music? It's ominous. I don't like it. Is that Keanu Reeves? No. Imagine. Um, alright, let's go. Down to the basement, thank God, be murdered. Be murdered. Jeez. It's so. It's so dark. What's in here? Not a lot. Sorry. God, I can't see. There's going to be something that jumps out of me for sure. For sure, man. Absolutes. What's in here? Open wide. Come inside. It's a black hole. This is like the Mary Poppins of the room. Also, <laughs> Mary Poppins of the room is also called the TARDIS. You know where it's bigger on the out, bigger on the inside. Why can't I? Oh, thank you. Thanks. Oh my god. Uh, why the frick are you pointing? Uh, those mannequins moved? Uh, they weren't. Hmm. Oh! A key? Was this always here? Uh, I must have missed it when I brought everything upstairs. Um, uh, 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 uh. Um, why are those mannequins pointing in a, all the same direction? He said a key. Bro, can I throw you? How does one... Well, I guess I have... I can't... 
Hello. Where did the key go? That's not a key. Where's what? Huh? He said a key. Is it on the floor? Oh, it's so dark. I can't. What are you doing? Why are you pointing upwards? What is going on? Oh my goodness. God, if you have more than one mannequin, do not allow it to point in any direction. That is traumatizing, I tell you what. And then don't have it, face palm. And then have it be like, oh, I'm looking, but I'm not looking. <laughs> Oh, there! Oh, I'm an idiot. Well, I've got two things now. The basement storage room. Hmm? Is this not the basement? Is this not the basement? Oh my god. Hey, Forrest! Oh, oh, Peggy, give me some warning before yelling down the intercom. Sorry. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Alright, I don't think I need. Yep. Um, oh, there's a picture there. Um, got a picture. Is that a picture of me? Can you imagine? Um, I'm sure. Right. Oh, what's this? Peggy, I've found a tape and a map down here. A map of what? Looks like it might be to somewhere in this storage area. Weird. Well, maybe the tape will give us more information. Play. How? Where? Do I have to put this together or? Is that the map? Oh, the... I see. How do I? How do I open it? Oh, here we go. I'll get there in the end. I'll get there. There we go. And then... George Ballow. 1968. That's when this all began for me. Follow the maps. Find the tapes. I'll be waiting. Wait. George Barrow? We all heard that he drowned after a night out drinking. Was it actually Clive? Has Clive really been the whistling man for that long? He says I need to follow the maps and find the tapes. I guess that's what this map is about. Hmm. I think we need to see what else is hidden down here. Be careful, Forrest. Keep looking. Buzz the intercom when you found something. Well, I've seen a picture. Is that where the next tape is? So, I'm just following... Pictures, I guess. Um... Any more rooms? Secret rooms? Secret TARDIS rooms. Or are you storing the bodies in here? 
Um, oh my god. Oh, no, I need that. Oh, sorry. My reference point. So it's on the, on the floor near shell. Oh, hello. Hello. Um, why is that flickering? What's that? Can I pick that up? Time of autopsy is 7 a.m. Cause of death is asphyxiation from drowning. The degree of rigor mortis indicates the subject has been deceased. Oh no. I don't like that. Oh no. Small lacerations to arms, legs, and face. Typically obtained by running through foliage. Severe blistering to the feet. As though the deceased had been running without stop. Nope. God. Have I mentioned that? Small lacerations to all the products and the base. Typically obtained by running through foliage. Severe blistering to the feet. As though the deceased had been running without stop. Something is going to jump at me. I can feel it. And, oh, another picture. What is this one of what? That's where I am. No? Additionally, there appears to be a post-mortem injury to the arm. It looks like it was trapped in a car door. Jeez Louise. It's like a friggin' maze. Where the friggin' am I? I'm gonna go into the abyss. Great. Oh my god. Oh my god, something is going to jump at me. I can feel it. <sighs> this is intense. Oh, another one. Oh, I love that. Oh, another picture. Oh, I love that. Oh, on a desk. Um, okay, well, let's play this one. It is the coroner's opinion that the subject likely feared for his life and was chased. Why is there a mouse trap? height into a body of water where he hit his head, was knocked out, and drowned. Following that, he was moved. Lock his arm. Lock Oh my god. Humpty Dumpty, the story of a love tragedy and betrayal. Oh my god. This is spooky. Spooky! <laughs> uh, I'm not scared, you are. If you're listening to this, then I'm probably dead. What the? Shit. Subscriptions to newspapers all over the country. A few weeks ago, I noticed headlines cropping up in those papers, one after the other. Each headline about a murder. Each murder, the death of someone I knew almost 20 years ago. And each one drawing closer to Gallows Creek. Drawing closer. None of us are innocent, but I don't think we deserve 
If you're listening to this, you're probably already dead. What? Oh, another one. Oh, the funny mousetrap's in the way. Can I pick that up? Caucasian male, age 18, the cause of death is established to be drowning as shown by the signs of, uh, C-section 2. Abrasions were found on the knuckles, likely from getting into fights in the past. Match has been known history of the disease being aggressive. No other injuries were observed, and from the coroner's opinion, there is no evidence of foul play. Additionally, the prelim preliminary <laughs> to toxicology uh, report indicates the disease had high levels of alcohol in their blood. It is the coroner's opinion that the disease went swimming while intoxicated, resulting in drowning. What's that say? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I made you do this, Virginia. Who's Virginia? And why am I still crouched? Text. Um. Okay. Well. <gasps> oh. Ooh, a new vinyl for my collection. Oh, shit. Where did that go? What is this? Delivery note? Roll of rookies. Um, the Woodside K fam. Um, what's. Why has he got this? Uh, was that box there before? Oh. What is this? System over the factory. That seems like... Um. Oh goodness. Um. Time of autopsy is seven a.m. Cause of death is asphyxiation from drowning. I'm going around in circles. Right, just gotta do this all thing. What have you found, Forrest? It's an autopsy tape. Doesn't say for who, but I think it must be for George. Poor George. He was so young. Something's bugging me, Peggy. What do you mean? I swear I recognize the voice of the woman talking on the tape. I just can't place it. Seriously? You think you've met her before? I don't know. I mean, I just got here recently. I don't know. Found another tape. It talks more about how George died. What did it say? It sounds like he was running for his life. Sprinting through trees and bushes, getting cut up all over. What would drive someone to do that? I'm not sure yet. I found a tape that introduces a new detail to the story. Post-mortem injury. Apparently, his arm got caught in a car door. A car door? Yeah, after he died. How do you suppose they can tell? How can they tell? I'm a radio producer, not a coroner. In another tape, the coroner comes to the same conclusion as I did. George was running from something. Maybe an animal? Maybe, but then there's this next bit. 
where the coroner thinks he was moved post-death. Moved the body? How weird. At the end of the tape, someone burst in and demanded the doctor, uh, Dr. Sullivan, to stop recording. Dr. Sullivan? Wait, Virginia Sullivan? She was her caller from earlier. Well, then our caller was involved in a conspiracy around this boy's death. We need to call her back once we finish down here. It looks like she might know something about what's going on. I, um, I think I found Clive's last recording. I think Clive might be gone. Gone? I found a confession. Not for any killings, but for playing a part in covering up George's death. He left this behind in case he died. He hoped someone would find it. Possibly. We've had a lot of callers tonight, but maybe not every victim made it to the phone, you know? We don't know how many there really are. Christ, Forrest, that's dark. I know, but Clive said he had read about other murders in other towns, and that the murders were all folks who knew about the incident, and the killings were getting closer to Gallows Creek. He said he wanted to do something good for once. The board in his office. He wasn't tracking people down to kill them. He was tracking them down to save them. Ugh, why didn't he just come out with all of this? Uh, He said his employer threatened his family if he spoke out about any of it. His employer? The one who orchestrated the cover-up? Oh, Clive. I'm sorry for thinking you'd killed all those people. Do you think you found everything, Forrest? I think there's got to be more down here. I need to find all the tapes. You think so? How much did Clive hide down there? Well, if there are more tapes, then there must be more maps to follow, right? That seems to be the case. All right, then. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Can I just go up? Oh, my... Get on. Dude. That is. I don't know. Um. Squeeze through here. Is that it? Oh. This looks useful. At 4 a.m., a call was received from a jogger, Miss Sandra Sharp, reporting that a body had been found washed up in the reservoir. I drove out to investigate and was able to identify the body at the scene as that of Jeff? George. George Barrow. I contacted the coroner's office and then the boy's parents. They informed me that they had not seen him since 7pm on the 2nd. Mm. Cool. 
cool, 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 no doubt. No freaking doubt. Pop that back in there. Right. Okay. So, where's that picture? where there's two little radio things preliminary toxicology results shows no signs of inebriation however a high amount of About damn time. Bloody found it, I did. Cortisol was found, indicating elevated levels of stress in the immediate moments before death. Forest. There's also a tape about a toxicology report. There were no signs of drinking or that he was on anything. What? But everyone said he went swimming drunk and drowned. It was in the newspaper and everything. I found a police report. Mentions a friend from earlier. Sandra Sharp. Sandra. The jazz runner? That's right. She found George's body washed up at the reservoir. The reservoir? Yeah? What's the strange about that? The reservoir! The cuts from running through foliage, right? But there's no forest around there. Also, how did it wash up at the reservoir? What do you mean? Reservoirs don't have tides. But that's what the police report said. It's not possible, though. I did a school project on reservoirs and got an A. But, yeah, not important right now. The important thing is that it doesn't make sense. What are you suggesting, then? That the body was originally found somewhere other than what the report suggests. Mm, it's been moved. That the sheriff tried to cover it up, but accidentally let something slip? Something like that, I think. Well, Sheriff Matthews wrote the report. If he hadn't been eviscerated, we could have asked him. True. But Sandra is still alive. Once we're done down here, we should give her a call. Do you think you found everything? <sighs> I think so. Forrest, what's going on here? Someone wanted that boy's death to seem like an accident. And they hired Clive to make it look that way. Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. We need to figure out our next step. 3 a.m. Thank God you're back, Forrest. I've been running out of stuff to pad our airtime with. Peggy, you work in radio. Forrest, I'm stressed. I mean, really. How are we supposed to keep a show going with all this happening? Uh, it this dark. is our job, Peggy. We, we gotta do it. Oh, you're right. So, what's the plan now? I think we should call yeah. Virginia back. All right, I'll get her on the line. Hello again, Gallows Creek. This is Forrest Nash. We're circling closer to the truth behind tonight's events. To this end, we're calling back one on. of our earlier callers, Virginia Sullivan. Fredman Plunker here? Who's this? Is it you? Goose? <laughs> you, Goose. Plunker, it's Goose. Goose! <laughs> goose! 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 Where are what? you? Get your ass here! The party has moved! Oh, cool. Where's it moved to? This old lady's house. Oh, she's pretty cool, though. Dude, 
too. She said we could raid her liquor cabinet if we stayed and protected her. Of course, we're not drinking anymore. We're staying sharp in case that whistling turd turns back up. The old lady might need our help. Of course, man, of course. Hey, could you put me on with the old lady? <laughs> you know, should check if it's cool for me to drop by. Oh, there's that goose respect we love. <laughs> I'll grab her now. Uh, hello? Is this Goose? <clears throat> hey, uh, Dr. Sullivan. Who is this? Hey, Virginia, it's Forrest. I'm, I'm glad you're still okay. Oh, Forrest. Sorry, I'm still jumpy. Uh, don't be sorry. Uh, I'll be jumpy too. I can't blame you. I'd be jumpy too. I'm so sorry this happened to you, Virginia. I thought I was. I thought... Easy. We're not calling to talk about earlier. We're calling because we think you can help us understand why this is happening tonight. Me? What would I know? Uh, Clive? Does the name Clive mean anything to you? Clive? No. I don't know that name. Maybe what are you asking about this for? Dawn? You mentioned that name earlier when you called us the first time. I don't know what I said then. I was petrified, Forrest. Clive's the janitor at our station, and we know you spoke to him in the past. Forrest, please. You don't know what you're doing. He'll come for me. Virginia, it's okay. Clive won't be coming after you. We think Clive's dead. Dead? But isn't he? He's the whistling man, Forrest. Uh, why so certain? We thought so too. We thought so too, but... You don't understand. All those years ago, he... It's okay, Virginia. He's gone. We found evidence to suggest he... Well... And... We found your autopsy reports for George Barrow. How? I saw him destroy them. Well, he didn't. I don't know if he kept them or made copies or what, but we found them. And we know it's related to what's happening tonight, which is why we called you. Why did you stay quiet? I... All right. One day, I came into work to find a... a boy on my slab. And as I finished the autopsy, this man, Clive, he just burst in and he started making demands to give over the reports, to falsify what I found. Of course I said no, but, well, when someone wants to make you do something, they can use the carrot or the stick. For me, he used both. You see, my sister is sick. She has a chronic condition that's never going away. It's expensive to treat, and it was getting to where I couldn't afford it. And Clive promised me that his employer would pay for my sister's treatment if I did what he said, and that if I ever spoke about this, he'd beat me to within an inch of my life. I don't know why he had me do it, but my sister needed me. You have to understand. She needed me. We understand. Speak for yourself, Peggy. I don't. You helped cover up the death of a child. Forrest! But... But he threatened me. And m my sister... You abused your power to help yourself. Oh, God. Forrest, <laughs> that wasn't necessary. It needed to be said. Cats out of the bag. So, Virginia is tied up in all of this. Clive threatened her to keep quiet about George's death. But for who? Why cover up these details? Well, we know Sandra was involved in George's death. Do you want to call her? I do. All right, but before we go asking questions, I think we should know what we want to ask. Is that fair? Yeah. We need to ask her about finding the body. She was the one who discovered it, but 
Something just doesn't add up. A hundred percent. She knows more than she's saying. I wonder what she's hiding. We'll hopefully find out soon. Anyway, just be careful when you're talking to her. Don't push too hard. We don't want her to hang up. Don't I'll be, be careful. Don't All right, be calling suspicious. her now. Don't hopefully she's at her jazz don't studio. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Aha! Uh -huh. Forrest, you're through. Hello, this is Sandra at Jazz Pizzazz Jazz Studio. Who is this? Hello again, Sandra! It's Forrest Nash at 189.16, The Scream. And you're live on air. <laughs> oh, I always thought folks called into a radio show, not the other way around. How jazzy. What can I do for you? How jazzy. Uh, well, <laughs> we're trying to understand what's behind the attacks tonight. We had a few questions. Why, Forrest, of course. Heck, after the way you saved my life, I'd say yes to just about anything you asked. Uh, why were you targeted? Do you know why the whistling man might have targeted you? Ha! As far as I can tell, he was just a knife-wielding psycho with superhuman cardio. He'd have chased after anybody. Right, well... We think he might be chasing specific people. People who know about the death of a boy named George. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Sorry. Uh, you found the body. Are you keeping secrets? Hmm. Have you had to keep quiet about anything? Any secrets you've had to keep? Oh, what would I have to keep quiet about? I don't know. I mean... Could be that you've seen something or heard something. I never saw anything. And even if I did, what would that matter? And, and it was years ago. Uh, you okay? Sandra, are you okay? It was years ago. We know. We know, Sandra. You do? You know about? Uh, yes. Of course. <sighs> This studio is my life. After I found the body in the river, I couldn't lose my studio. Do you understand? Sure. Sure. I understand. When the rent just kept going up, he said he'd stop if I just needed to keep quiet. And everything would be okay. Who Sandra? Was he? Who was he? He was... He said, if I told everyone I found the kid in the reservoir instead of the river, he... He... Uh, I'm sorry. I can't do this. And she's gone. I don't think that could have gone any better. You truly did great, Forrest. Well, folks, if anyone out there has any thoughts on what's going on tonight, please call in. That's good timing. We've got a call waiting just this second. Okay. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream, with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Hi, Forrest. Oh, my God. I know this is really out of the blue with everything happening tonight, but I wondered if you could send a special Boy. birthday message to my uncle. Sure, why not? You know what? I'd welcome a change of pace. I'd be glad to. Thank you, Forrest. He's my Uncle Ronnie. His first name's Peter. Oh my god, Pepperoni. Him. But since he always had salt and pepper hair, even as a kid, can you believe it? Folks always called him Pepper. Uh, thanks for the history lesson. Is there anything besides happy birthday you'd like to say to Mr. Pepper? Oh my god damn it! <laughs> Yes! <laughs> Tell him he can get the best birthday deals and party packages oh here at Pony's Pizza! Start oh a You son of a bitch! Stop <laughs> calling us! Sorry, Forrest. Let's just move on. We've already got another caller on the line. Oh, <laughs> uh, classic. This is 189.16, The Scream. I'm Forrest Nash. You're on the air, caller. Caller. (sighs) 
Ponty. Ponty's <laughs> pizza always delivers. Come rain or sleet or whistling man, we'll be there. <laughs> Uh, Forest? Forest? Are you okay? <sighs> is he okay? <sighs> Forest? I hope the whistling man gets in with his own pizza slicer. Jesus, Forest? Sorry, sorry, that was... That was too much. It's okay. It's been a high-stress night. Don't worry about him anymore, okay? Not for tonight, anyway. I think he's spent for now. We've got another call. Whenever you're ready. Been a punty pizza again. Folks, don't spend your money at Pawnee's Pizza. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that. Moving along, I'd like to welcome another caller to 189.16 The Scream with me, Forrest Nash. Who may I say is calling? Well, hello again, Forrest. Don. Don? We played your song, Long Ride Home. Did you hear it? Can you tell us? Uh, never mind that now. Forrest, I'm calling because I need your help. Oh. Um. Are you in danger? Are you in danger? Oh, I sure am. Do you mean... Yes, he's after me now. You? So, he must have heard me on the radio helping you. Um, helping? Helping? You didn't exactly help. Maybe I've been helping more than you know. I was out following a lead, trying to work out who would be next, after Chuck. And what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. So I came back to my apartment building, but this newfangled security system has me locked out. I need you to help me get inside. Um. Ask a neighbor? Can a neighbor let you in? Oh, I only moved in last week. I don't know anybody yet. There's not even a buzzer here, only the, the keypad for the entry code. I need that code to get inside. Which apartment block do you live in? Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. It's the New Woodside apartment. I doubt any of your listeners live there. I don't have many neighbors. Sounds like a prime piece of real estate. The sound really carries at night. <laughs> Shit. Noisy part of the town? Not a dog person? Uh, I'm guessing you're not a dog person. No, I'm not. It's my neighbor's dog. Boy, I wish he'd muscle that thing in. Oh. And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. Um, security's name. What's the name of the security system? Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says Starling Security 4000. There's a keypad, and it looks like it wants a, a six digit number. That's a lot of digits. Six digits. Sounds like that would be hard to remember. Yes, very hard, especially on a night like this. Yeah, of course. Don't worry, Don. Thank you, Forrest. I knew I could count on you. I'll sit out of sight. Call me back soon. All right, folks. Here's a little tune for you all to enjoy while I try to break Dawn into her apartment. Yeah, hang on. Coming up for your listening pleasure, it's Caged Tiger with their single, One Last Goodbye. You were pretty quiet there, Peggy. Forrest, was it just me or was there something? Yeah, it wasn't just you. Something was weird about that. Yeah, well, tell you what, we have a Starling 4000 or whatever here at KFAM. Clive bought one for the station. Maybe we can find something to help. 
Well, I'm not sure who. But to help someone. Um, we are not gonna give Dawn. <sighs> okay, so she's locked out of the Woodside Apartments, and somewhere, Clive probably has the papers for the Starling 4000. Dawn just wants access to the radio station. The apartment she's talking about is the radio station, for sure. She just wants us to give us, she wants us to give her the access code for the station. So she can waltz on in. What the hell is this? Mm. Oh my god, imagine if she was here already. Oh. She's already outside. Bet. Um. Access could be. Um. Why is it? Ding ding. ding. Oh, Peggy. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? Nothing by way of key codes. I see. That's it. You're not gonna hint at me as to where I can find it. Oh, oh any, idea? any ideas, Peggy? Dawn says she's stuck outside the Woodside Apartments with the whistling man nearby. She's locked out because of some new security system. Yeah, the Starling 4000. Right, and we had the same security system delivered here. Clive was going to install it, so check the basement. I guess that's where Clive would have stuff like that. Thanks, Peggy. Again? No problem. Don't take too long. Oh, it's that bloody manual, isn't it? It sure is. Let's see. For God's sake, man. Wish I could out of that manual. Locked doors, so few keys. Gosh. Oh, 
Here it is. Starling 4000, user manual. Ah, these codes should come in handy. Okay. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? The Starling 4000 security manual. It's got a bunch of codes. Good. And did you find anything else? Nothing, except the manual. All right. Well, I'll get Dom back on the line then, Forrest. I'll let you take it from here. Thanks, Peggy. When you're ready, shut the music off. Oh, my bad. Line one, whenever you're ready. Yes, Peggy. Don, are you there? This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. Oh, thank God you're back. I'm so afraid. What's the code to the gate? Um, give entry code, give alarm, pass activation, give maintenance. Um... Well, we're definitely not going to give her the entry code, because that's stupid. Um, warning this, we set off all the security measures. Alarm test, deactivation code, maintenance call code. Um, maybe the alarm test? Give the alarm test activation. The code, code. is 191519. Thank you, Forrest. Son of a bitch! Ah! Is she? Breaking into the studio. Yeah, stay out! Nobody disrespects the sanctity of the ring! Don't ever come back here again! I'm calling the cops! Thank God. Hello? Is someone there? Ricky, get back inside and turn on the radio. Whoever that was, she was trying to break into the ring. She? Forrest, man, you got no idea. That was him! That was a whistling man. The alarm gave me just enough time to get my rifle. I don't like hurting folk, but I can't let anything happen to Maxi. He's my best friend, you know? I... Listen, man, I'm heading back inside. Gonna barricade that window. My man, thank you. You and Peggy can skate for free whenever you want, forever. That's a done deal. I... Thanks, Ricky. Can't wait. You got it. Talk to you soon. Oh. Okay, Gallows Creek, here's some music while we process what just happened. Hang on. So, the whistling man is a woman? And it's Dawn? Uh... I know. I, I can't believe it. She called up. You spoke to her multiple times. How do I get rid of this? Hang on. Um, yeah, she seemed pretty normal. I know she was right. I thought she was just a regular Gallows Creek strange. I knew she wasn't right. Is that right, Sherlock? Why do you think she requested that song? To get me outside to mess with us. To get me outside? Maybe, but how? She didn't know the song was outside to start with. That's right. She never actually attacked me out there. So? What now? I guess I should make an announcement. We do have new info. Okay, kill the music and you can make the announcement. Bro, you cannot be using words like kill when there is a okay, murderer you're live in three, on the loose. Two, Hey folks, this is Forrest Nash here. I hope you're all safely locked inside. For those of you listening to that last call, you might be wondering what to make of it all. Here's our take. We now believe the killer 
is actually a woman, one who might manipulate you into letting her in before she attacks you. When neighbors look out for each other, I'm sad to say, but it's time to trust no one. When neighbors look out for each other and stay safe. Um, no. We're neighbors. Look out for each other and stay safe. The killer was calling themselves Dawn. This could be a fake name. Do not trust anyone called Dawn. Do not trust anyone called Dawn. Gotta roll them if all out. If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, please call in. You folks have my new number, right? It's 911. <laughs> Hopefully, our next caller can help shed some light on our killer. Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, folks, time to take a call. This is Forrest Nash, and you're listening. Please help me. My name is Casey Moore. I'm a 25 Nancy Drive. My best friend's been stabbed. He's he's bleeding everywhere. I don't know what to do. Please help me. Uh. Is he still breathing? Is he still breathing? He, yeah, but, but he's bleeding out fast. I really need help. Please. Take a breath. We've been out at the reservoir. We were heading back to his place. When we heard this whistling all of a sudden, he just started freaking out. He screamed at me, told me to hide. I'd never seen him like that, and I, I just panicked and ran and hid in a bush. Oh no, Forrest. Then what happened? He went up the road and talked to someone. I couldn't really hear or see anything. It sounded like he might have known the person, and they just stabbed him. Was it the whistling? Was it a woman? Casey. Was he talking to a woman? I don't know. They had a mask and wore all black. That's all I know. Please, we need help here. I'll get you help, but I need to know. Where did the masked person go? They left. They left him to bleed out. I waited until they were gone, then dragged him into the garage and called 911. Wait, why didn't she make sure he was dead? was destroyed in the explosion at the gas station. You should get all the info you can. Uh, what's your friend's name? What's your friend's name, Casey? It's Jason. Jason Parker. Can you tell us where Jason was stabbed? They stabbed him in the stomach and then stabbed him again in his leg when he was on the ground and it's... Oh, the knife is still there in his leg. We'll be right back. Peggy, patch us through to the hospital. On it. Phoning St. Gabriel's now. Switch to line two. Okay. Hello, St. Gabriel's Hospital. How can I help you? Hi, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16. <clears throat> we have a stab victim at 25 Nancy Drive named Jason Parker. He's been stabbed in the stomach and the leg. He's bleeding heavily. Oh, God, I'm sorry. But the ambulance is... Well, the ambulance. Know. I know, but please, we need something or he's going to die. Forrest, I... Listen... You're going to have to get him here. We need to see him, and we can't get there ourselves right now. We don't have any way to drive him right now. And even if we did, he's bleeding out fast. All right, listen. We need to buy him time to get here. That means stopping the blood first, and then finding someone to stabilize him. To stabilize him, you really need someone with first aid training. Do either of you have any? No. Me neither. Ah, uh, damn it. I'm really sorry about this, but I have other patients who can't wait. All I can do is talk you through the procedure as quick as I can, and then leave the rest to you. You think you can handle that? Ah, uh, we can handle it. Hit me. I'm sure we can handle it. Okay, from the top. If he's bleeding out, then you need to get him comfortable and try to stem the bleeding. Lay him down. Apply continuous pressure directly to the affected areas. When the bleeding slows, get a clean cloth of some kind and hold it over the wounds. Get them comfortable. Apply pressure. Clean cloths when slowed. Got it. I think. You said he was stabbed, right? If the object he was stabbed with is still in him, don't take it out. 
It's stopping the worst of the bleeding right now. If anything, you should secure it so it stays where it is. I wouldn't have thought of that. It makes sense, though. Hey, you so that dumb. was a lot of info. But I think we can handle this. Glad you got it so far, because there's more to go. Um, are you sure you can't stay? I can't keep up. Just keep going. I'm still with you, Doc. What else do we need to know? If he's lost a lot of blood, he may enter shock. If he does, act fast. If you apply the cloth and it's bleeding through, don't remove it. Just apply another on top of it. If it's safe, elevate his legs to get blood circulating to his vital organs. Try to keep him warm. Get him to rest and reassure him. We need the patient to stay calm. <sighs> All right. Uh, don't replace bandages. Elevate his legs. Keep him warm and calm. This is a lot. I'm really sorry. That's as much as I can give you right now. Try to stop the bleeding. Find someone to get him stabilized and get him here as quick as you can. Good luck. All right, Forrest. Casey's still on line one. Um, how, how is Jason? I'm here. How is Jason doing? Badly! He's still bleeding! I need help! I've been putting pressure on his stomach wound since you left. But he's still bleeding. I don't know what to do. That's good, Casey. The nurse said to do that. What about the knife in his leg? Keep it's that gotta in. be hell! Should I pull it out? Don't touch the knife. Take the knife out. No, don't touch... No, don't touch the knife. The bleeding will get worse if you pull it out. Yeah, you Are idiot. you sure? I'm sorry. I'm going to stop making suggestions. No, Please. don't worry, Casey. We're a team here. We're all going to get Jason through this. Casey, is his leg wound bleeding right now? I hate looking at that knife. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's bleeding. His stomach is worse, though. Uh, We need to secure the knife. Yep. I think we need to secure the knife so it doesn't move around. Do you have anything you can tie around it? Uh, yeah. There's some laundry piled up on top of the dryer, some cloths on the hood of the car, and what else? I guess I've got my jacket. Yep. Um, use the laundry, use the cleaning rags. Take the cleaning rags and hold them over the wound. I really hope these are clean. Here we go. Oh, I didn't think about that. Uh, Shit. Uh, they might I'm not be I'm sorry, clean. Jason. Oh, frick. It's secure. I'm putting pressure on his stomach again. Doing. I'm starting to think we might make it. Forrest, can I have a word? Now? Now isn't the best time, Peggy. Can it wait? Forrest, it's kind of important. All right. Give me a second. Casey, I'm going to have a quick word with Peggy. Keep putting that pressure on and let us know when the bleeding is under control. You're doing great. But what if something happens? We'll still be here. Just shout if you need anything, and we'll be there. I promise. Okay. I'll wait. Jason, please be okay. What's up, Peggy? We can't stay on the line with her all night. Dawn is still out there. What if other people need us? <sighs> You're right. She's probably on her way to her next target right now. Exactly. And you heard the nurse. We need someone there with training who can stabilize him. He's got to get to the hospital somehow. Um, should we have to drive him? Any suggestions? Could somebody nearby... Um... Could somebody nearby help them? Maybe drive them to the hospital? You know, that's exactly what I was wondering. Do you have anybody in mind? I might. A little before you started working here, KFAM did a mandatory first aid training course. Me and Karen missed it because we were away on a producer getaway. Classic. You skipped it, didn't you? I, never mind. So, how does KFAM's first aid course help us? Casey said they're at 25 Nancy Drive, right? Yeah, why? They put up a bunch of cheap houses around there about 10 years ago. So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. Do you think any of them could help Casey and Jason? Probably. But I don't know who lives there. And since I missed the training day, I don't know who knows first aid. Could you call them and ask? I don't know everybody's numbers. I've only ever called Karen. Everybody's personnel info is probably in Reggie's office. Got it. I'll look through their files in Reggie's office. 
It's a life or death situation. I'm sure they won't mind. Right. But there are a couple of problems with that. Uh, go on. Go on. It's sensitive information, so Reggie probably locked it in his safe. Great. Great. Do you have any idea what the combo for the safe could be? Not a clue. Reggie's a serial note-taker, though. Maybe something in his office will give it away. Right. There is something else. I'm not gonna like this, am I? Have you ever heard, the future is floppy? Peggy, what the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about floppy disks. Ugh. Floppy disks are like these futuristic things that have information on them. Well, you put sorry. them in a computer and them. they do something. Peggy, I know what a floppy disk is. Anyway, Reggie decided that the future is floppy and started phasing out our physical records and replacing them with these floppy disks. I imagine it's the same for our personnel files. That's good to know. Since we haven't heard anything from Casey, I'm guessing Jason's okay for now. I'll check out Reggie's office and see what I can find. You'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door now. Thanks, Peggy. I just have to look around. Good. I'll patch my mic down to the office so you'll hear me over the intercom. Okay. Where is Reggie's office anyway? Um, can we pick that up? Reggie's office. Unlock all doors in the station. Where is Reggie's office? Oh, in here. I Looks guess. like I need a four digit code. What is this? Acts forever. Need to write. Pitch documents. Good title. Bring back original pro tag and villain. Um, right. What's this? Oh, just a receipt. What's this? Best boss. How do I? Hmm. Oh. I could have gone further. No. Right. Um, What's this? Alien sightings. Huh. What does this note say? Clive, if you're reading this, stop stealing my post-it notes. Yeah, Clive. What does this say? Ask Jeannie where those tapes are. It's been weeks now. Overdue. Okay. Um. Okay, got a map. People love maps around here. Love a good map of the surroundings. Oh, here we go. What's this? Hint, very important date. Hmm. Oh. Um. Very important date. Um, is the date when you got your first date certificate? 
So 130887 um 13 08 Oh, hang on. Or maybe thirteen eight eight seven or maybe nineteen eighty seven. Nineteen eighty seven. Nineteen eighty seven. Nope. Important date, you see. Um What's an important date? Mm. Oh. Got it. Floppy disk. Floppy disk. Can we play it somehow? Um, okay. Cool, 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 no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Um. Floppy. A floppy disk. Oh, here we go. He's the intercom. He's the intercom, eh? Hey, Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? I can't figure out how to get into this stupid safe. No worries. We still have a little time. Reggie writes almost everything down somewhere. I recommend you start reading. I'll have a look around. You're probably right. I'll let you know when I find something, or don't. Oh. How do I get this fluffy dicks? I can't pick up the thing! Can I put that? Oh. Okay. Could this be it? Pizza delivery killer. There you go. Maybe, okay. Pizza delivery killer who kills with a pizza cutter. Terrifyingly, there's never any pizza. What happened to the original delivery guy? Maybe write him in the front of the front of girl's boyfriend. Protagonist is a college student, Megan, surname to follow. 
which is smart, beautiful, resourceful, and lactose intolerant. Amplify the d divided um, divide between her and the pizza killer. Takes place on the 11th, 07. Um, should we try that? 11.07. 11.07. Nice. Easy soaped. No. Oh. oh my god. Oh. So many floppy disks. Right, one at a time. Alright, I'm just gonna all the ones I've done there. Um let's crouch. What was this say? The hell was that noise? Barbara Albright, receptionist. October uh, Barbara is really getting on well with all the staff here, everyone, everybody gave her great feedback at her last review. I get the feeling that there's something going on uh, with her and Brad, call it a hunch. Barbara got another cat recently, she must have at least five now. Daisy, Murphy, Penelope, Freddy and Lord Winston. I'll need to monitor productivity going forward. The cat photos are a big distraction for the rest of the team. Barbara laughed when I told her about the concept for my new horror script. I don't care what she thinks. A story about an alien egg at the center of the earth set to hatch on February. Is a great idea. Why else would we avoid having a February 30th? Cool, 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 cool. Um, I'll put this one over here. Oh. Um, Karen Lawson. Nancy Drive. Karen has really stepped up her duties in the recent months. She has fully taken on Hamish's show alongside the Timberline twins ever since Wes left us. Hopefully she doesn't get any ideas about being paid double. Karen has started mentoring Peggy. I think this will be really good for Peggy. They are even doing team building training getaways to improve efficiency. Update, I'm starting to suspect that these producer training getaways are being strategic, strategically, oh my god, <laughs> uh, that word, <laughs> don't, <laughs> oh shit, uh, they've now both missed Secret Santa, First A training, and the Teddy Gallows Junior Station visit. How could you miss Secret Santa? Out of all the days, I tell ya. Awful. Right. What are these ones? this one over here oh 
does this say? Hey, Peggy. I think Peggy Reggie's Weaver. on to you and Karen. Maybe don't bring those little drink umbrellas into work for a while. What? Why are you reading my file? I've never seen somebody we need really... to find someone who can help Casey. We already know I can. Don't waste time. You're I've right. I'm sorry. Somebody, Joe, I need to focus on possible candidates. I can read the rest of this later. Her, Karen, and Barbara have really become a little family already. Maybe we need to run the station on a girl power. Hopefully, it's cheaper uh, than ele electric. Sometimes I wonder if Peggy secretly wants her own show. She hasn't been shy about getting involved in the call on the screen. Sometimes it feels as though Forrest could just leave for a coffee mid-call and nobody would know. Peggy and Karen have missed another work event, this time first aid training. Because of their training sessions, their collection of cocktail parasol grows after each session. Why are they doing training sessions at a bar? Why are they? Peggy, you don't sound like the best. I don't know. Employee. Look. Just saying. Alright, who's is this? Get a load of this, Peggy. Apparently, I'm a lone wolf type. Forrest, what are you doing? We don't have time for this. We have a man literally dying on the line. I can't believe we actually. You're right. I'm sorry. I need to focus Nash on possible candidates. I really shouldn't have read both. We're in a hurry. His motivation may be low. His demands are a bit beyond our means, and he's currently blacklisted from any reputable station. But hopefully, we don't have a reputation to lose. Forrest isn't really integrating with him with the team. Seems to have this lone wolf thing going on. Heard him call Jeannie, Janny, Janine, and Brenda. Oh, Jeannie, Janny, and Janine and Brenda in his first week. Hopefully, this changes when he gets settled. I've heard Forrest with Peggy for his show. They seem to have developed a relationship of sorts pretty quickly. Which is good because we sure don't have the show budget to pair him with Karen. Not a Karen. Oops. Right. Uh, let's, let's do this. And spash on the there we go. Right. John Hedger J John refuses to engage with the first first aid training during the course. I know he was a war medic, but it was a station policy to send everybody regardless. John apparently has a bunch of medical equipment in his home that we uh, procured from the military at the end of his service. Is that legal? Do I need to report him? Uh, spoke to John again about eating the free samples that Brad gets sent for his reviews. He said he'd stop, but uh, he said that he would last three. That but he said that the last three times too. Is it an un-American to re a war vet? To, oh, re reprimand? Reprimand. Reprimand a war vet. I can read it. Um, okay. That one over there. Swap hands. And the last one. Bradley Carter. When I hired Brad as our station's food critic, people said I was crazy. We only have three takeout places and a diner. 
What's the point? To them I say, you can't be afraid to explore the darkest reaches of the unknown or Henderson. Bradley and Barbara seem to be spending an awful lot of time together. I didn't realize she was so interested in Brad's work. Maybe I should join one of their after work meetings sometime. I've always wanted to learn more about food. Brad, Brad and Barbara, Brad and Barbara ended up missing most of our first aid training sessions. I'm not sure anyone went to the first aid trainings. It sounds like everyone missed it on purpose. No one was there. Brad made a joke about practicing month to month. Uh, wait, made a joke about practicing month to month and Barbara got really upset and stormed off. The joke wasn't that bad. Cool, man. Right, is there any, I don't think there's any more. I think that's all of them. Yep. Hey Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? Uh, uh, I got the safe to open. I got the safe open, but I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be looking for in these files. We need to know who can do first aid, and we need them to be close to Nancy Drive. Anything further away than a street or two is probably too far. Anyone who ticks those two boxes is our best bet. Got it. I'll take another look at the files. I'll let you know when I find something, or don't. Alright, well, this person had seemed to not attend the bloody first day training. You live in Axe Down Lane. Don't know where that is, but um, you didn't attend the first day training. Yeah. God, Brad. That's a no. That's a. Yeah. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Whose is this? I can't read what it says on there. Let's find out. Right. Who's is this? Oh. Oh. I mean, she didn't even attend either, so. Okay, yo yo, boss. Um, how do I get this out? There we go. On the floor. Alright, next up. This Barbara, fourteen Craven Street. So Barbara, da da two Barbara. Doesn't say anywhere that she attended the first day training. Um. She just really loves cats and she made fun of her boss's work. So, um, bye. Whose is this? Oh. Could this be it? Could it? Oh. Wait, that's just to get the code. Um. Is this Forest Nation? Forest Nation's fire. Karen, 22, Nancy Drive. Um. 
she is fully taken home to show. Do, 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 do. Long side. Haven doing team building. Do, 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 do. Uh, no, 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 no. They both missed Sega Sander in the first open. Well, no use, you live in Nancy Drive, so let's just put you as a possibility. If that, if worse comes to worse, you know. Um. Oh, this is Forest Marshes. Um, let's get that one out. Bye. Oh, shit. <laughs> Whose is this? John Hedger, 14. Um, refuses to engage in the first aid training during the course. Um... So it seems like he... Hey Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? Uh, I think I know who I called. think I know who our best bet is to help Casey and Jason. All right, good work. Who should I... Hello? Is anybody there? Please pick up! Casey, I'm here. What's wrong? Um, did he have booze earlier? No! Um, I think he's going to shock. God, it sounds like he's going into shock. Casey, just stay calm. It's going to be okay. But the bleeding seemed to slow down. Did I mess up? Jason, I'm sorry. Casey, calm down. You've done everything right. I. I need you to listen to me, okay? For Jason. What did the nurse say to do about shock? Elevates Jason's, uh, Jason's legs. Casey, I need you to elevate Jason's legs. We need to get the blood flowing to his vital organs. Got it. Jason, stay with me. I I'm just gonna move you. This might hurt. Okay. I propped his legs up on some boxes. I'm looking at my notes. We need to get Jason as warm and comfortable as possible. Do you have anything you could use nearby, Casey? Yeah! I still have some laundry next to me. I'll wrap him in some blankets. Just give me a second. <sighs> sorry, sorry. Jason's plate there with bandages. Sh should I get him new ones? Or... Oh, God! Um, apply additional buttons. Don't remove the bandage. Apply another one on top of it. Do you still have something you can use? I've used the rest of the laundry to keep him warm, so... I'll use my jacket. I can always get a new one. I'll fix his bandage and get him warm. Hold on, please. Oh. Sorry, sorry. I'm done. You're gonna be okay, Jason. Just relax now, okay? Oh, I'm scared. He's not doing well. Is he? Is he gonna? Uh, he's gonna be fine. Be strong for Jason. Um. Casey, I need you to be strong for Jason. Sit with him and reassure him that everything's gonna be okay. Okay? Forest, we need to hurry. Jason doesn't sound like he's doing too well. You said you knew who to call earlier? Who was it? Uh, it was... John Hedger. We need to call John Hedges. He lives on Nancy Drive. He didn't really participate in the first aid training, but he's a former war medic. He's probably the most trained person we have. Really? Oh, war medic, huh? Yeah, and according to Reggie's notes, 
John keeps all of his old equipment at his house. He's something of a hoarder. All right. What's his number? Uh, five four two zero seven three five. Calling now. Let's hope he picks. Uh, who the hell is this calling me? What time is it? John, it's Forrest Nash here at KFAM. We have an emergency and we need your help. Forrest, if this is a work emergency, then it can wait until the goddamn morning. Just leave me a note like everybody else. Um, uh, this is a medical emergency. Somebody has been stabbed. Uh. A man has been stabbed by the whistling man, or. Never mind. He's lost a lot of blood and he's passed out. We need you to help him. The whistling man? What kind of joke is this? John, we're not kidding. A man is gonna die if we don't help him right now. Seriously, I. I haven't been called on for over 10 years. Where's the patient? What's his condition? He's at 25 Nancy Drive. I think we got his friend to stem the bleeding, but he's gone into shock. He's passed out right now. You say he was stabbed? Do you know the extent of his injuries? From what we were told, he has two major stab wounds. One to the stomach and one to the leg. The knife is still in his leg and the stomach wound is open. Understood. Let me grab a few supplies and I'll head right over. Damned if he dies on my watch. Thank you, John. We'll let them know you're on your way. Good luck. Hello, Casey. Are you there? How are we doing? Bad. Jason seemed really weak and then just started thrashing. Um, how is he now? What about now? <laughs> is he still thrashing? He's passed out. <gasps> Please oh, no. tell me you found someone to help. Casey, help is on the way. My colleague will be there soon. Hello. Please let me in. I'm guessing that's Jason there. Casey, I'm gonna need your help. Forrest, Peggy, don't you two worry. We've got this from here. Okay. Forrest, we'll call you back later. I have to go now. Good luck, everyone. God, I hope he's gonna be all right. <sighs> and with that, the show moves on. We're sending our best wishes to Jason. Well, after all that excitement, I think we could use some music. Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. Yeah, I was just like, what do you mean music? I'm not even in the studio. <laughs> God, this place is a mess. Oh, damn it's it. getting pretty this. late. This might be your last break for the night, so try to enjoy it. Give right. me a buzz when you want to go back on air. Should I like... Yes! <laughs> yeah, so... Um, yeah, I'm just going to leave it here. Um, I, there's not that much left of the game. Um, I just flip this around. Um, well, anyway. Um, yes, yeah, so um, there's not that much left for the game, but I. <laughs> what are you doing, PJ? Um. Whew, that was a long, long episode, but, um, I hope you guys are enjoying this video, um, 
you know, I think all evidence uh, leading to Dawn being the culprit, being the mask killer, being the whistling man. Um, so excited to see how that plays out. Um, but, um, yeah, so I think, um, yeah, that's, that's about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, um, all will be revealed in the next episode, so stay tuned for that one. Alrighty. I need to go and eat something. Um, if you like this episode, guys, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and like this video. Um, if you're excited for the next episode, just leave that comment in the in the comments below. <laughs> oh my god, I should go. Um. <laughs> Alrighty. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope everyone has a lovely, lovely t time, day, wherever you are. Um, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.